Welcome to the Fat Guys with Smokers podcast. I'm Mike. And I'm John. We're a couple of overweight barbecue enthusiasts trying to share our love for sweet and smoky food with the world. Thanks for hanging out with us as we talk about life, share recipes, successes, and failures that have all led to our love of cooking outdoors. Welcome, everybody, to the Fat Guys with Smokers podcast. Did I start too early? No, I think you're right on. <laughs> you know what I was just thinking? Have you ever seen Anchorman? Uh, are you ready to put our friendship to the test? Yeah. I hate Will Ferrell. Oh, that's true. We've talked about this. That's right. We have. All right. Well. An- Anchorman in particular <laughs> is one of my least favorite Will Ferrell <laughs> movies of all time. Whether you hate him or not, do you remember the part where they're like introducing the news team and they're all like acting like they're talking and working on something and then they all just stare at the camera? Yes. I was thinking that's how we should start each podcast. <laughs> like, okay. That'd be hilarious. Anyway. I well, I could get on board. Welcome to the Fat Guys with Smokers podcast. I'm Mike here with John. Uh, John, a lot has transpired since our last podcast, I feel like. I was just thinking about that. Like, Normally our chit-chat is weather-related geopolitics. Yeah. I mean, there's stuff to talk about in the economy. Sure, um, sure. But no, we've we've been busy in the last week or so. Yeah, we have. Life has been... Pretty cool, actually. I know. And it all started with a few emails from the flat top people. I I had no idea that what was going to happen happened. Oh, me neither. Everyone's like, they got free grills. (laughs) We did not get free grills. Maybe we should preface by that. We did not get free grills. But it was actually my wife, which surprised me because she was not on board. I just can't believe she told us. Yeah. When I mentioned, like, oh, yeah, I'd like to get a Blackstone if it ever goes on sale. She's like, oh, they're having a warehouse sale this weekend, but we'll be out of town. Sorry. Little did she know. John was not going to be out of town. <laughs> Our friendship runs deep. So tell us about it, John. Yeah, it was it was awesome. We had no idea, like, the timing was going to work out like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but Blackstone is based here out of Cache Valley, Utah. Um, and they had a warehouse sale. And do they have a warehouse? Yeah. Um, just massive. They've and got, it's their warehouse. They don't like rent one for the sale or anything. That's their uh, If they location. did, they took two buildings that are... I'm trying to think how big these things are. They are probably... Big. Yeah, I mean... Like airplane hangar style? Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. um, I was just trying to like think through it in my head. Like They're probably somewhere between 80 and 100,000 square foot. Oh, wow. Like... Good heavens. Chock full of merch? Like... Yeah, so they've got two of them. And I better do do my math here. While you're doing that... John I, did I, all the work. I sat by the pool and texted. Like, yeah, yeah grab I, me uh, this, grab me that. I, I had so. too many zeros there. They're probably, they've probably got, I don't know, like 60,000 square feet. A big. Nonetheless, like, they've got a lot of space between these two buildings. And was it all stuff you could buy? Like, the whole no, thing so was in probably, the sale? it was probably like two or three basketball courts space dedicated to the sale oh. and they had as you came in they had a, a i don't know a hundred of their like two burner griddles that were set up that were like on a scratch and dent um they had demos of all of their products that were there that <clears throat> were still discounted um but were like new out of the box mm. and then they had the whole long like divider for the warehouse and the sale Mm -hmm. was five or six boxes high of their 36 inch griddles. Wow. That there were probably two or 300 of those boxed up. Um, and then they had 20 or 30 Gaylords just chucked full of, um, of accessories. What's a Gaylord? Uh, you know, the, big cardboard thing that they put watermelons in. Okay. 
That's a Gaylord. Really? Yep. I worked with those all the time at the grocery store. I never called them that. Well, that's uh, when you ship freight, that's what you call them. Right on. So, hmm. um, but yeah, it first off, like I have to say, I've done a couple of these warehouse sales. Mm-hmm. Um, and we've talked about like the barbecue, barbecue community is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, like pretty accepting, pretty like, yeah, let's, uh, let's help each other out. Let's, let's be friendly. Mm-hmm. Um, so while these are like black Friday type crowds and sales and like people are there on a mission to get what they want. I've been to this one. I've been to a couple of the Traeger warehouse sales. I've been to the camp chef warehouse sales. Mm -hmm. Um, Like it's rare that it's like Walmart on black Friday where the guys from the tire center walking around with torque wrenches, like (laughs) trying to scare people, beat people off and, um, my wife almost died in one of those piles once. So dude, it's people. It got unreal. The year Furbies came out, man. And I like, <laughs> I saw things. <laughs> I saw things. <laughs> um, but just like, it, it's a high stress situation. Like everybody's there. Everyone's trying to ask questions. Mm-hmm. I mean, I was asking questions because I, I went with the intention of buying one or two. Ended up with three in the back of my truck, which was pretty impressive. Three 36 inch grills. Yeah. Um, and then I went back and I bought a fourth one. Um, and we'll talk about that in a minute. <laughs> um, but man, shout out to Blackstone, their team, like so positive. Yeah. You were saying you were really impressed with the way like, that they handled everything. And yeah. And it, I mean, these sales are. You have some of the guys from the warehouse that are there and are like really the ones that know what's going on, but then to help like check people out and answer questions, like you get professional staff. Yeah. Um, and I interacted with a bunch of them and even when they didn't know something or they didn't have all the answers, like really polite, like happy about what they were doing. You could tell like, it's just a really great culture there Mm. that I was, I was super impressed by. Um, Especially like, you know, my dad and I went and we were trying to be kind of quick out, um, so that we could get in and get out. I had to get back to work for, um, some stuff that afternoon and man, we were in and out like 30 minutes, Mm. had all the help in the world. Um, I've got a camper shell on the back of my truck and these grills are too tall to like go through. Yeah. So I had guys like showing me how to take them apart and like stack them in my truck and mm. it it really was impressive you can fit exactly three 36 inch blackstone griddles in the back of a five and a half foot ford pickup bed yeah in case if anyone sweet. was curious about the dimensions and capacities there count them three yep mm. so um yeah so i got one you wanted one yep you were on vacation <laughs> partying it up um and your buddy wanted one. Yeah. I, I mentioned it to him. He's like, dude, if it's a good deal, let me know. So I like sheepishly when John called, I was like, um, so you know how you're just doing everything for me? Could you do it again <laughs> for this guy you've never met? But I still don't even know what his name is. <laughs> same. And he's awesome. Um, but yeah, so we did that and like take them all over to this like banquet table where they're ringing people out. And I was like, Oh, I need to grab this and this. And I'm like running around, like grabbing accessories. And, mm. um, it was awesome. So yeah. got that all set up. And then my dad had been kind of eyeing one and he was like, no, I don't think I'm going to get one. I might get one. Well, father's day's coming. So I got home and called my sister and called my mom and oh, there you go. Yeah. So we, we had to go back and get another one. Um, and it's, it was fun. Like yeah. we've cooked on them a couple of times and it's just been a blast. Yeah. I'm excited for all the different, po- like our episode last week, I said, neither of us have one of these. So we're kind of, you know, we're buyers in the market. And since then I've watched so much stuff of different things you can cook with it. I'm really excited to experiment on it and try different things. I am too. And the, the one thing I dogged on Blackstone about last week was the grease management. Mm-hmm. Um, it's still kind of inconvenient the way that my 
like I've got a raised deck in my backyard Mm -hmm. and because I have a problem, um, like it's a small deck. It's probably, I don't know, five, five by 10, five by 12. Mm. Like it's not huge. Mm -hmm. And there's a, you know, big Traeger out there, a, you know, I think it's a four burner Weber grill, a pit barrel, Mm -hmm. and now a Blackstone, like, there's not a lot of room on yeah. my deck is, is the picture I'm painting. Like there, there is no furniture. Like it is just a cooking space. Yeah. Um, so it is kind of hard to like get to the grease pan because it's, it's up against a rail, mm-hmm. but cooking on it and having it in the back, it like, it makes total sense to yeah. put it back there. I kind of like it. Just push everything back there, get it out of your way. Yeah. So deal in, with it later. Yeah. Instead of having that, like, little hole in the front Mm -hmm. which i thought would be where i would want it to Mm be it makes total sense to just push it back and yeah and be done with it they're they're a subtle v shape and then everything just goes out in the middle and it's really kind of nice so yeah yeah it was super cool Mm -hmm. um but i did we did breakfast one night we did um sausage we did uh, took cinnamon rolls like uh, like a Pillsbury cinnamon roll out of one of those cans that explode when you open it. Okay, um, and we smashed those like a smash burger style. I'd seen it on I don't know whose Instagram. That sounds amazing. Yeah, so we did those as like cinnamon roll pancakes. That okay, we did smash burger style. Wow. Then um, you just put frosting on them and eat them. Uh-huh. Or? Yeah, the, the icing. Like, that sounds awesome. The icing we just heated up in the microwave and then drizzled it over the top. Holy cow. Um, and then fried eggs. And I couldn't believe how fast it cooked. Hmm. Like it was like the pancakes were like two minutes aside. Mm-hmm. The sausage was like three or four minutes. And the fried eggs, man, like crack them, let them sit, season them. 30 seconds later, you were flipping them. That's what I noticed. I did it today. I just got back into town last night. So we, we had breakfast for dinner. And the bacon, dude, like you throw it down by the time you're throwing the last one down, it's almost time to flip the first one. And it, I mean, did you put the press on the bacon? I didn't. I thought about it, but I didn't have it open yet. My dad is like a crispy bacon aficionado. Yeah. Like that is his jam. Uh And man, we pressed bacon yesterday. We did, uh, we did smash burgers, like true smash burgers. Uh Um, and we did bacon and it was so crispy, like he was in heaven. Yeah. He was so excited about huh. it. So. Yeah, well, I did get the press, and I've got another one, so I I should do it, but I didn't. I didn't do it today. But. Yeah, it was it was wicked good. Pretty good. Yeah, excited. A lot of possibilities there. I, I mean, know. still love the smoker, but yeah, what? It's just kind of cool. Speaking of smokers, yeah, you sent me a video that made me pretty jealous while you were yeah down in St. George. Tell us about your trip and. Uh, Pica Rica? Yeah, Pica Rica. So we went down with some friends at Thane, my buddy. He's an avid podcast listener. Um, so Shout appreciate out to him. Thane. And they're awesome. I mean, we've been friends since, basically since we met our wives, we've all been friends because they're really good friends um, through high school. But um, So we went down to St. George and our kids hung out. We just had a good time. And uh, again, my wife, who for not liking barbecue, really is a clutch performer in the social media barbecue news department because she found this Pika Rica Instagram page. It's new. I think it opened up last month, but it's just a huge barbecue joint, uh, and it's downtown St. George. If you've ever been there, check it out. Um, but, yeah, so we went, and um, we the wait was a while. It was like an hour and a half long wait. Um, but I mean, it was cool because you're still watching things and, and they would, every time they pulled a brisket out, they'd cut the burn ends off, put them in a tray and send them down the line that you were waiting in. Dude. It was awesome. And the, oh, I assume it's the owner. I don't actually know. I didn't get a chance to talk to him cause he was just running like crazy the whole time, but he brought out their special that day was beef dinosaur ribs. Dude. So he brought some of those out. I assume one that just fell apart. Oh my gosh, man. That's on my list. Oh, my dream cook list. Me too now. And I asked him about it. Um, anyway, we went through and, and we got to the end. Uh, I had Damon with me. Uh, Whitney took all the kids back to the apartment because uh, she wasn't interested. And 
we weren't really interested in waiting with all the kids that weren't going to enjoy it. But Damon came and he was way into it. And then Thane and Amber um, and their little boy were there. But I mean, just a cool atmosphere, a little spendy, like a probably, this probably isn't an everyday lunch type of deal, but I got brisket, uh, a hot link, like a sausage. Nice. It had like uh, serrano and cheddar, I think, inside Ooh. of it. Oh, dude, it was good. And I got, um, Damon really wanted the spare ribs, so I got him a couple spare ribs. Uh, and then they had this corn, shoot, what'd they call it? Esquite? Does that sound right? You speak Spanish. Esquite? I think that's what they, I don't know. E-S-Q-U-I-T-E-S, I think. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway. It's street corn. Yeah, it was just street corn. It was so good. Not like on the cob, but just like in a salad. Uh-huh. Uh, so good. Uh, the mac and cheese was fine. I'm not a huge mac and cheese fan. My wife was like, yeah, it tastes fine, but it's like, you know, just normal mac and cheese. They also had beans. I didn't try the beans, um, but they had all kinds of barbecue sauces there that they made, and they had this mustard sauce that was to yeah. die for. That I, I mean, I saw it and was like, uh, I mean, I'll grab it to try it. No, dude, I love, but, I love Carolina Gold. Yeah, I mean, I don't so think I've good. ever had it before. I don't think there's anything good. better on pork. Yeah. Well, Thane got turkey, and Ooh, I tried a little I bit of that. Oh, dude, it was money. It was very good. Um, anyway, we got through the line and you can kind of see through the back room, they have like outdoor seating and they have their two huge smokers there. One was, I think they said a thousand gallons. And I think they said the other one was 500 gallons. Um, I was going to say, I know the one that you looked at, you sent me a picture was a thousand gallon. Yeah, that was the thousand gallon one. And I was, I mean, I was kind of creeping around. The guy came out to stoke the fire and I was like, Hey, do you mind if I just kind of lurk behind you and take some pictures he's like dude come on over like let me tell you what's going on like so nice so friendly and like he like let me hold your phone and you i'll get you a picture of you checking it like so sick dude and they just had briskets for days on that thing um that's what i'm talking about like the barbecue community and it's true like almost every barbecue restaurant you go to like if you know a couple of questions to ask like you know tell me tell me about your smoker and like They'll take you back. Like, oh, yeah. Everybody loves showing off their smoker. Yeah, dude. It was so cool. And they, I asked him about the dino ribs. I was like, so when you cook that, is it like a brisket? And and he said they cooked it just like a brisket. Like, they took it to 160, wrapped it, left it until it got to 200. I've never cooked them, so I figured it was kind of the same, but. I think they're just hard to find. Yeah. I mean, I Cos- you're right. Costco's got beef ribs, but. They don't look meaty enough. Yeah. And I bet I bet Pit Stop's got them, but yeah, they're probably, probably like 25 bucks yeah, a pound. Yeah, they're spendy there. Yeah, they're wicked but spendy. It was, I mean, so cool and, and a cool dude, like a great atmosphere. So it was a lot of fun. Yeah. So Pico Rica, that's my shout out today. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah, check them out on Instagram. I promise you will be hungry even if you just ate a massive meal. Yeah. Oh. So. Yep good stuff i know after you sent me that i haven't even told Haley that i've done this oh i should like disguise my voice (laughs) witness protection program i joined a bunch of facebook groups like we've talked about this like we're i think if either one of us found a big propane tank like we'd buy it in a heartbeat for sure um but i joined a couple of like um propane tank smoker builder pages oh, yeah. uh-huh. and uh even a couple of pages that like source propane tanks but oh, wow. they all seem like they're back east yeah like it's, that's the problem you see them all the time but it's like texas or you it, know yeah so um and they're heavy i had no yeah. like i expected them to be heavy a 500 gallon tank weighs a thousand pounds i did not know that you'd have to have a tractor to move it yeah just to get it off your truck holy cow yeah so, hmm. um, needless to say, Mike and I might be road tripping to Texas later this summer. Hey, dude, can you be imagine sweet. the podcast that would come out of that road trip? Oh, dude, that'd be sweet. <laughs> one, one year we're going to Memphis in May and we'll just podcast the whole thing next year. Let's do it. It'd be sweet. Yeah. Hmm. So, um, yeah. So it was an exciting weekend. Yes. It was even more exciting when you got home. Oh my gosh, dude. <laughs> I'm so yeah. mad. Yet again, another podcast reel 
or Instagram reel that took 30 seconds to put together and is going viral. People are loving it. It's a like 10 second video. Seriously, I had this issue last year. I remember you telling me about this. Yeah. I'd forgotten all about it. I just have this cheap Walmart expert grill. It's fine. It's good for burgers and dogs. Whitney knows how to use it. I have no hate for it. It's a, it's a fine thing. However, he's got a little bit of hate. There is a hole in the back where the lid opens. And I sealed up everything with mesh because this happened last year. Um, and the starlings will get in and build a nest. And so last year I like let, I mean, I opened it and was like, oh, this is annoying. What should I do? And I cleared it all out. And then I I don't know. I just didn't look at it for a week, came back and there were another huge nest and eggs in it. And I was like, oh, well, I can't do anything now. So, you know, my kids were into it. We let the babies hatch. Here's the problem, John. A barbecue grill is made out of metal. And when it sits in the hot sun, it just solar bakes those little chickies. (laughs) One day my boy goes out to check and he's like, Dad, oh my gosh. It was disgusting. They were dead. I mean, they suffocated. I don't know if they got hot. Like, it was so sad. So disgusting. I mean, I. Chicken nuggets? Oh, dude. Chicken jerky? I I can still smell it, though. Ugh. Oh, the decaying. Oh, uh, anyway, cleaned it out, um, and burned it out and sanitized everything. I mean, I should have just thrown my grill away then. So this year they tried and I caught them early, burned it out, sanitized it. They tried again, caught them early, burned it out, sanitized. I was like, they get it. And I came back yesterday to a huge nest. Uh, and I blinked. I guess when was the last time you looked in it? It would have been last Saturday. So this would have been five days. I guess it, I guess it would have been seven days later that I looked in it. It, it, Dude, it was massive. Dude, The whole grill was eight inches of fluff. Yeah. I mean, the first time when I burned everything the next day, there was like a, a lot of material in there for a nest. It's a huge nest. There are four eggs in it now. There were three. Today, there's four. I don't know what to do. So, if anybody has any suggestions on how to get the freaking birds out of my grill without scarring my children for life, uh, you know, that'd be great. Like, I'd be happy to just sit out there and shoot them, (laughs) but I don't think they're getting the message. So, I mean, what if you started grilling chicken every night for dinner? Maybe. Just subliminal, like, hey, this could be you. Well, I don't know. It's disgusting. It's pretty gross. Yeah, I think if you used your grill every night, that would probably solve the problem. That's probably true, but I don't really like to use that one. I'd much rather use my Weber charcoal. Yeah, I get that. I mean, I can start it up for a few hours every night just for let your kids health and safety. Hey, let your kids uh, roast marshmallows over it. They'll be go. thrilled. There you go. That's a good idea. <laughs> Except the problem is, is your kids and my kids are dedicated podcast listeners and now we're going to be making i'm sorry that's That's my fault yeah that's fine that's fine anyway yeah that's kind of a bummer yeah but i'm happy to take any suggestions i wondered about getting a grill cover i don't have a grill cover for that one i have a cover for everything else but oh that would work i would imagine that would at least make it harder for him to get in so yeah but whatever I like that idea, actually. That's, That's probably the most practical of all the ideas that I've <laughs> I've thought of. You've you've thrown a few out that I'm like, John, <laughs> we still live in city limits. We can't use dynamite, all right? Uh, anyway. Uh, for the record, I suggested Tannerite, not dynamite. Oh, my bad. It's a little different. My bad. That's true. That's true. All right. Anyway. Well, um, we skipped the uh, the comment review. Oh, we did. But it, it was a little bit intentional mm-hmm. because I uh, I got quite a lengthy text from my brother-in-law. Yeah. You're a strange brother-in-law who you haven't talked to for years. And the podcast brought you back together. I mean, I see him like at least once a month. Oh. I like my story better. It does. All right. No. 
Um, but uh, Drew, this this whole episode goes out to you because uh, you bring up a good point, and like I, when I sat there and I kind of thought about it for a minute, on a smoker, breakfast is probably one of the more challenging dishes to really figure out what you're going to do. Yeah. Um, but we've got a we've got a couple of things to talk about on the smoker, mm-hmm. um, and in honor of our new flat top grills, we uh we have all sorts of ideas there because yeah. the flat top was made for breakfast, right? Like I don't I don't know about you. I mean, you talked about having breakfast for dinner. Like we freaking love breakfast for dinner. Yeah, we do it all the time. It's easy. The kids will eat it. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, and especially now, cleanup is a freaking breeze. Oh, dude, seriously. The house doesn't smell like bacon for days. Which, I mean... It's pretty nice. It's kind of a disappointment. Yeah, I mean, I, I get over it, but all your clothes smell like it and it kind of gets stale after a while. Yeah, I get gross. it. Okay. So, we're going to talk about breakfast. Let's start with the smokers. Um, and this is actually one of the... Like, when I first started with my smoker when I bought that little 22 inch Traeger junior. Mm-hmm. Um, after I had like figured out how to do pork, I think this was like one of the f- like first things I, I like ventured out of my like comfort zone to do. Yeah. And that's a breakfast fatty, a breakfast fatty. Now I'm not talking about myself. Obviously we are fatties. It's we okay. Fit right in. Yeah. Um, but so fatty for anybody who doesn't know, um, is delicious. That's all you really so need to good. know about it. So much pork. So good. Yeah. So you you take a bunch of bacon mm-hmm. and you make a bacon weave, which I feel like everybody knows what that is now. Mm-hmm. Um, before it was like this big deal where everyone talked about it where you yeah. take a piece of bacon and you lay it on a cutting board and then 90 degrees you lay another piece and you yep. and weave, weave it them. together. You make mm-hmm. like a little little bacon blanket Mm -hmm. um and on top of that you take a a tube of ground sausage jimmy dean's whatever brand you like Mm -hmm. um flatten that out into a into a square sheet on top of the bacon weave Mm -hmm. um season the whole time you're going you're seasoning yep um and then you can put you can put whatever you want in it and you can do breakfast fatties you can do Dinner fatties. I think one of my favorite was a pizza fatty. What? Yeah. Tell me of this. That sounds awesome. Yeah. So for a breakfast fatty, you typically add things like scrambled eggs, uh, grilled onions and peppers. Uh, you put hash browns in there. Okay. Basically, all things breakfast, you put in there and then you roll it up into a nice fatty little log uh-huh. that is covered in bacon. Yeah. Wrapped in its bacon it blanket. It looks beautiful when that bacon like crisps up. Like it is, it looks pretty gourmet. It's pretty I think cool. it's only appropriate that we do one this week so that we can put it on Instagram. I'm afraid we're gonna have to. Darn it! That was. It's interesting that you say it's one of the first things you did because that's what I used to season my first drum that I ever made. Nice. Like, somebody said, just smoke a fatty in it, and I was like, oh, well, yeah. like there's plenty of grease that's gonna come off this thing. Yeah. Like clear it's your seasoned it well. <laughs> yeah, like. Empty your grease buckets before you do this, everyone. Yeah. Um, but so you do this and you put it out on a smoker. I think you normally run them like 180 or 225 and you put a probe in it till it mm-hmm. hits 160 and it's safe to eat. Um, I've seen some people sear them off. Like once it's cooked, oh, okay. roll it to kind of crisp up the bacon. Yeah. Um, I like to do mine a little bit more like ribs and I paint it with barbecue sauce. Oh, wow. And let the sauce thicken up and okay. and set. Yeah, I didn't do that. That sounds awesome. And then from there, you got a couple of options of how you eat this thing. You can take biscuits or toast or bread and slice the fatty and put it between bread and mm-hmm. eat it. You can... So that's if you have a log, right? You can slice it on, on the long Almost side. Almost making patties. Yeah. Yep. Making rounds. Fatty patties. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, or you can, you know, 
slice it and break it apart and put it in a tortilla, and it's a killer breakfast burrito. Oh, wow. That's a good idea. Yeah. Or you can just throw it on a plate and go to town. And just pound it. All of which are excellent options. See, my fatty, I loved making it. It looked really cool, but I didn't think about hash browns, eggs. Like, that sounds awesome. I put cream cheese and jalapenos in it. Ooh. And it was good. It was really good, but I don't feel like... There was enough substance to kind of offset all of the pork. Yeah. You know what I mean? It is. It was just so much. It's dense. Yeah. And I think, so deviating from breakfast a little bit, I said we did a pizza fatty. Mm -hmm. So we used Italian sausage, bacon, obviously, to to wrap it all together. Mm -hmm. Um, Put pepperoni in there. um, uh, Used mozzarella cheese and then filled it with marinara. Wow. Rolled it up. So when you sliced it, you had like your sausage, your pepperoni. Yeah, layers of yeah. pizza. And put that um, on garlic buns. And it was like. Wow. Oh. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So. Yeah. I made that first one and it was just so much that I was like, yeah, I mean, this is good, but I don't get it. But I'm loving the idea of the breakfast fatty. Yeah. And that's the cool, like, you can put anything in a fatty. You can right. you can make a cheeseburger fatty. You can make a pizza fatty. You can make a breakfast fatty. There's not a lot that's not good wrapped in bacon yeah. with a little sausage around it. Yeah, and really any ground meat will do, like. Yeah, you could just do, like, a burger fatty. You could do, you could do ground beef. Oh, I you think could that would do, be so much better than what I did. You could do ground pork. You could do ground turkey. Yeah. I mean, that may actually be, like, a salvation of ground turkey. Ground turkey is just so freaking dry. I've never had it. I've heard that, so I've never. I've had. I know it. it's a lot healthier for you and stuff, but it, I just haven't. My uh, my beef with ground turkey. <laughs> See what you did there. <laughs> um, it. I, one like ground meat, you should always take to one sixty. You should cook it well done. Uh-huh. There's a whole surface area stuff yep. like that. You're a geometry teacher. You can you can Indeed. tell people all about this. Yep. Um, but yeah, a lot of surface area. You really have to get it hot so that it's food safe. Yeah. There's no poultry. Poultry scares the crap out of me with like yeah, bacteria. That makes sense. Um, my uncle did this when he was in college. He was at the grill and he was cooking chicken and eating potato chips and wiping his hands on a towel in between and ended up with salmonella. Oh. Um, I did the same thing. Hmm. Like almost to a T did the same thing. And I, that was like the most miserable experience of my life. Really? So I'm uber paranoid about poultry not being done. Yeah. Um, and so you've got to cook it really well done. It just gets like, there's not enough fat in it. Right. So it dries out and especially the turkey, like, dude, it's a dense meat. Like Mm -hmm. it'll fill you up and it just like sits in your gut like a rock. Yeah, but it's got that thing that makes you go to sleep, like Thanksgiving. Tryptophan? That. Yep, I couldn't remember. I knew it started with a T. Yep. Um, But I wonder if, like, if you did it with a fatty. Yeah. And and you could could put a bunch of cheese. You'd have all the fat from the bacon. Mm -hmm. Do, like, a basil pesto kind of thing in the middle. Dude. Cover it in gravy? Like a turkey bacon... BLT is what I'm thinking. That's not bad. That could be good. Hmm. Anyways. We need to just have an episode about different fatties we yeah. can do. Good so breakfast. anyways, breakfast, my first stop on a smoker is a fatty. Yeah. So Absolutely. Andy, next time you wake up on a Saturday morning early, it's a fatty. I think it took like an hour and a half to cook. Yeah. Like it, it's not a super long cook because it is ground meat and all this stuff. Like it's not super dense. Well, and I think that's what breakfast has to be. I think that's why we kind of struggled to think of breakfast ideas on a smoker because a lot of our smoker meals are low and slow cooks that you get up early so you can have it ready for lunch or dinner. Nobody wants to get up at 12 a.m. to start cooking breakfast, right? I mean, so I feel like it's yep. got to be a shorter thing yeah i am ho 
You're the, you keep like dropping these high school <laughs> acronyms that I'm like. I spend a lot of time I with my school. Oh, in my own. Okay. And it's like, me. It, it takes me a minute to like translate them. Yeah. In my humble opinion. Uh, I, uh, what was the commercial? I don't know. Anytime someone starts those, all I can think is IDK might be FF Jill. <laughs> yeah. I don't remember what commercial it was, but I'm pretty sure you showed it to me. It was funny. Yeah. Um, so fatties are an option. Yeah. Um, you were talking about one that I had forgotten about, and then it prompted my other thought. But yeah, talk about a uh, breakfast casserole. Yeah, yeah. We used to do this in Scouts all the time, uh, and we just cook it in a Dutch oven, and it was bomb. And I have not tried it on a smoker again because I don't think about this until it's time for breakfast, and it would take a little bit of forethought. Um, but I mean, just we would take some Jimmy Dean. Hot sausage, uh, brown it up, mix in eggs, mix in hash browns. You could layer it like a lasagna. You could mix it all together, whatever. And we'd cook it in a Dutch oven, and it was phenomenal. Um, Did you guys cover yours in eggs, in scrambled eggs? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. We did. And then we would, like I said, we would just cook it on the Dutch oven, and I'm pretty sure we would just do it on like a, um, a camp chef stove. But... I can imagine with a smoker. I've never smoked eggs. Have you smoked eggs? Um, I mean, I did those, the uh, the smoked deviled eggs. Oh, that's right. Were, were those smoked? I think they were just fried, weren't they? Yeah, they were deep fried. There was no smoke yeah. involved there. My word is know. that the eggs would soak up so much smoke that it would almost be like... Oh, yeah, I think okay. they'd be bitter. Yeah. I mean, I've like they've been in a fatty, but they've never been exposed directly to the smoke. Hmm. Well, I guess eggs cook so fast, maybe we could just add them last after everything else got a little smoke on it. Put the lid on. I don't know. I don't know. Never done it. Just thinking about it. Yeah. Um, but, it, I mean, I think the point you're making is, is like, put a lid on it. A pellet grill is just a wood-fired oven. Yeah, it really is. So anything you can cook inside, you can cook out there. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, th- I'd kind of been trying to go through thoughts and, you know, Baked French toast, mm-hmm. I think, would be really good out there. Cinnamon rolls would be good. You brought up the the sticky bread, the monkey bread yeah. stuff that you do in Dutch ovens would be awesome. I saw Malcolm Reed did in a 12-inch cast iron pan. He put, like, a delicious, like, glaze down with nuts and then put cinnamon rolls on top mm-hmm. and baked it. Man, it looked good. Yeah. So. Um, and sausage gravy, like biscuits and gravy. Oh, Putting the sausage gravy out there in the smoker to, yeah. to heat up, it's money. I like that idea. It's money. Make it on a stove. Make like make it however you're going to make it. And then stick it out on the smoker for 20, 30 minutes Ooh. while it's in that like cook down phase. Yeah. While it kind of simmers and reduces or whatever. Cash Ooh. money. That sounds really good. Yeah. I love me some good biscuits and gravy. Dude. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I'm a... I'm a huge fan of biscuits and gravy. Yeah. Really just gravy anywhere. Yeah. Just mostly in my gravy. mouth. That's what I... Did you ever watch How I Met Your Mother? I have a lot of movie yes. references. Yes. <laughs> Ted has a bad hangover and he's like, we all had our own things and the waiter just asked him what he wants. He just goes, gravy. <laughs> he's like, do you want it on something? <laughs> Surprise me. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Uh, I'm still mad about how that show ended. Oh, it was the worst last episode <laughs> of any show ever. I, yeah, there, there's a, there are a couple of, um, authors and series that I really like in, in books, mm-hmm. and one of them, like you can almost tell at the point in the story where like the publisher starts to get like agitated, like we need to get to press, we need to yeah. get to press. Because you go from like all of this like really rich character development to like 40, 40 pages of like climax and the end. Right, right. I kind of felt like that's what happened with How I Met I Your Mother. So it was a, guys, we've got to finish the script. Okay, we're just going to come up with the lamest yeah, possible we'll end to dad's so story. Everyone hates their life. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Anyway, so, flat top breakfast. Dude, what can't you cook on the flat top for breakfast? And I feel like it's pretty easy. I mean, I I feel like anybody who's been camping has probably at least seen somebody cook breakfast on a flat top. Like, it's not... 
it there's i mean i'm sure there's some amazing things you could do but i think it's pretty easy like it's pretty forgiving um i think it is the and we talked about this a little bit earlier i think the the only hard part is and you learn the lesson real quick is like one keep an eye on the temperature like Mm -hmm. you really need an infrared to yeah like i figure out where the heat is um it just it cooks fast yeah so don't think you're gonna like throw the bacon on and then go scramble the eggs yeah. up and like mm-hmm. prep, get it all ready. Everything's got to be right there. Yeah, yeah, that's a really good point because it's not like I mean sometimes I'll be cooking burgers and I'll flip them and go inside and watch the game for a minute and then come back out and flip them again. Like I don't think that's a thing. Like because no. they cook so fast. I did smash burgers and they were done both sides in like four and a half five minutes. That's pretty incredible. Yeah. Um, I watched a thing, a guy, he was in the restaurant business and he was, I can't remember, shoot, I should have remembered his name and then I could have shouted him out. Maybe I'll shout him out next time. I don't know. Okay. Um, but he was in the restaurant business and he said, okay, there's an order in which you want to do things. You want to put your meat on first, then you want to put your hash browns on, then you want to put your pancakes on. And then last you want to do your eggs. Um, that way everything just kind of gets warm and stays warm at the same time. So I tried that today. It worked pretty good. Yeah. Except for everything went so much more, like so much faster than I thought it was going to. So, yeah. Yeah. There's nothing worse than cold eggs. Yeah. Yeah. No. Can't have that. Yeah. I, uh, it's taken me probably 30 years. Like I would like, it's only been in the last, like probably five years that I've, convinced myself into eating runny eggs Mm. and most of the time it's got to be like over biscuits and gravy or corned beef hash or something Mm. where i don't have to focus on this nasty runny yolk all over the place i love over easy man no um but yeah if it was cold like yeah Yeah, that's true no um a couple things i'm really excited to do like one hash browns yeah. Like it is hard to duplicate like that crispy edge of a hash brown mm-hmm. cooking it in a pan on the stove. Yes. And you need that space to spread everything out in a thin layer. I did that today. First time I've ever succeeded cooking hash browns. They weren't great, but they were way better than yeah. anything I've ever done before. Yeah. And I think so. you've, you've got to season pretty liberally. Yeah. I feel like on the flat. I thought it you wouldn't have to season nearly as much because like it wouldn't be falling off Mm -hmm. into the, like into the grill, like it would on a normal barbecue. Right. Um, so I I was, I think I under seasoned my burgers yesterday. So I think that's a good point. And I, I wonder if maybe it's just because we're used to a smaller area, but everything spread out. It's like, you got to dump it. So I'm excited about hash browns. I am also incredibly excited about hash. Mm. Like I've got some pork in my freezer. Like I want to get that out, get that crispy, get some potatoes going, break eggs over the top of it, cook it all together, melt some cheese. Yeah. Hot sauce. You love you some hash. I love me some hash. Are you going to dump the Alpo crap you were talking about (laughs) last time on the flat top? Heck yeah, dude. Oh, Oh, I... I mean, I can't, man. I don't think I can. Dude. I don't think I can. It is so good. There is nothing that I won't try, but even just hearing your description last week, I was like, oh, dude. Come on, man. Didn't, no, thank you. Didn't your uh, didn't your grandma ever make you like chip beef or anything? Yeah, probably. I don't know. Man, my, but it didn't uh, look like Alpo going out onto the... Oh. No, I mean... No, thank you. I don't think my grandma ever did. My great-grandma... Used to like use canned roast beef, mm-hmm. and like it's just got like that alpo y smell to it. Like yeah. it's it's kind of gross, yeah. and the way the fat congeals, like it just looks nasty. Um, dude, corned beef hash is fantastic. Uh, I think I'll have to take your word for it. it. You're supposed to be coming over this weekend to help me with the project. Yeah, that's true. I might just have to make some. Oh, John. There's not a lot I can't I, eat. I dude, don't know if I, w- I can do that. I won't let you see it while it's in Alpo form. <laughs> I'll cook it up. I'll get it real good for you. <laughs> oh. I'll put one of those over easy eggs over the top of it. Ooh. And you I will be a happy man. All right. We'll see. 
Oh. That's good. I feel, I feel like we have to talk about something else. We can't end on talking about Al. <laughs> I wish I could make a good puke sound. I was in a driver's ed car with a girl the other day who was really good at it. She was like making everybody else dry heave just making the sound. So I can't do it. I don't know if I was just sheltered, um, if I wasn't creative enough as a child. I feel like I did plenty of teenager things. Um mm-hmm. But Haley, my wife, and her friends, they would go around and they called it barfing. <laughs> and I uh, I thought it was the weirdest thing when we were dating and in school. Um, a bunch of her high school friends, had, they had all kind of gone to school together and knew each other. So we'd, uh-huh. we'd hang out with them. And man, we... Uh, we were dragon main one day and they... Uh, <laughs> they decided they were going to start barfing and like you just chew up like whatever gross food and apparently uh i think it was goldfish and blue powerade were like the primo mix but so you get like all this stuff in your mouth and you'd like pull up next to somebody roll your window <laughs> down look Gosh. at him and <laughs> 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 that and i'm not going to lie like some of the looks on people's faces were Priceless. Like as the driver or people in the backseat? No, like doing people this? in the backseat are doing this. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what? But I, I remember we were, uh, it, it's a, I think it's a great harvest now, but there used to be that, that 7 Eleven up in Smithfield. Mm-hmm. And I remember we had, we had just left there and it was like, I don't know, 9 30 at night. Like it was starting to get dark. Mm-hmm. And, one of them did it out the back window of my Jeep. And like this lady was pissed. <laughs> like followed us all the way back into Logan. Like to was, say what? How dare you throw up? Oh, or was she, it obvious that it was fake? I get what I I thought it was pretty obvious it was fake. Um hmm. But yeah, she was like screaming at us at every stoplight about how she was going to call the police and follow us. And say what? <laughs> These people puked. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Oh. So. Well, it sounds like we got to get Haley some hobbies. I was going to say, Haley was a wild child yeah. between that and leaf bagging. Oh, what is leaf bagging? <laughs> <laughs> Not where you went. Oh, not where you're going. Man. Um, no, they would, uh, in Salt Lake, I guess they use, uh, like, big black garbage bags or, like, some sort of bags to. Yeah. So they would. Like the pumpkin ones or whatever. Uh huh. Okay. So they would pile up these, like, all the bags of leaves on the, that were out on the street to be picked up uh-huh. in front of somebody's house. And then they'd like put a bag over their heads and like poke holes so they could see through it. And someone would <laughs> would like doorbell ditch them and they'd lay in the pile and like watch people come out and be like, what's going on? <laughs> oh my gosh. That's actually pretty hilarious. <laughs> I'd actually enjoy that. Yeah. So I was well, never fast enough to doorbell ditch. They'd always make me do it when they wanted to laugh. And I'd be like, <laughs> halfway down the steps by the time they got to the door yeah, yeah man i uh, i couldn't run real fast but i was really sneaky tp in houses yeah <laughs> so hmm. all right well i think we've covered up the alpo smell in the room well done well done thanks Haley, for your <laughs> high school shenanigans helping us get through that until next time i'm john i'm mike and this is fat guys with smokers <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Fat Guys with Smokers podcast. Be sure to check us out on Instagram and Facebook. Leave us a comment. We'd love to hear from you. Be sure to subscribe so you don't forget to tune in for even more nonsense from a couple of Fat Guys with Smokers. Don't forget and like subscribe.